we're talking about the Israeli election, because my videos have just been getting too many likes recently. So why not talk about one of the most divisive issues in politics? Scroll down to the comment section if you hate yourself, or want to learn some exciting new swear words that this generation coined. As some of you may have heard, Benjamin Bibi Netanyahu just won his fifth term as Israel's leader, making him the longest serving prime minister in Israel's history. First, I have to give you guys a little background on this leader, because I'm assuming some of you are reacting like I do when a mom tells me her kid went to my high school but was two years older than me. Yeah, Netanyahu, I think I've heard of him before. Uh huh, yeah, well, good to hear he's doing well. I'll talk to you later. You've probably heard his name in the context of his terrible relationship with Palestine, and it's pretty clear why. I mean, the international community doesn't get together to criticize him for an era of healthy economic growth and stability, thawed relationships with Sunni Arab leaders, and expanded Israeli trade ties in Africa, Latin America, and Asia. What I'm trying to say is, I don't want to cover this with the Israeli equivalent of everybody who voted for Trump as a racist. There's some pretty interesting implications to this re-election that I'm actually excited to talk about today starting with a hilariously sketchy domestic issue that, well, we'll see. Netanyahu is under investigation, likely to be indicted. Basically, it's for various forms of bribery that Netanyahu allegedly received. And by the way, Netanyahu is hoping that his coalition will approve a bill that makes it impossible to indict a sitting prime minister. To be clear, that was just reported on April 11th, not weeks or even months ago. I mean, damn, it's never good when someone asks why you're running for president and you can credibly say to avoid serving prison time. This is not an exaggeration either. I mean, shortly before the election, it was reported that the attorney general had already serviced notice that he plans to indict the Israeli prime minister on multiple counts of bribery and fraud. This begs the obvious question, how terrible was the other politician? Still, this leads to the question of how long the longest serving prime minister will be able to serve, because the attorney general is currently trying to indict him and he hasn't yet passed the bill that says he can't be indicted. Man, hard to see why him and Trump get along so well. So that's playing a major part in how people are interpreting this administration, especially considering Analysts say re-election allows Netanyahu to say he has a mandate to fight looming corruption charges. He can argue that the Israeli public, knowing what the charges are, knowing what they supposedly did to break the law, despite that, voted to keep him in office. In other words, keeping Netanyahu in office is more important than enforcing the white-collar criminal law. Yeah, so we'll see how that policy debate goes. Liberals who are banking on the Mueller report dethroning Trump, I think there's a lesson to learn in here somewhere. Now to the part I'm assuming most of you actually tuned in here for. How does this affect foreign policy? Well first I need to talk about how it doesn't affect foreign policy. Generally when you hear that a famously anti-Palestinian far-right leader won an election, you probably imagine, aw oh man if he had just lost, I'm sure the second place guy is a peace-loving socialist. In reality though, this was the second place guy in this election. It's not totally clear what, as a former military chief of staff, Gantz would do about the Gaza Strip or about the West Bank where Palestinians live and they want independence, relations with the U.S., relations with other countries, the Iran threat as felt by Israel. Uh, there was no, we didn't get the impression that Gantz would really change policies a lot. Yeah, the largest liberal party won 5% of the vote. To put that in American perspective, that's as high a percentage of votes as Gary Johnson and Jill Stein garnered together in 2016. So yeah, wow, liberalism is the third party candidate of Israeli elections. Now I'm going to stop a few comments right here by saying Israel is a parliamentary system, so it's not a great comparison, but we'll get to that in a bit. For now, what does electing the far right guy instead of the center right guy mean for foreign policy? In the immediate future, I can identify two things people are looking at. First, because it's impossible to talk about politics without at least mentioning him once, Donald Trump. And now that I have your attention, it's actually more of a Jared Kushner. 
<laughs> Turns out that while we were all focused on our border issues, he cracked the code to Israel-Palestinian peace. Unfortunately, this administration is keeping the details of this plan a secret for now. Because what better way to get a peace agreement between two countries than keeping both of them in the dark? He made a rare televised interview to talk to the Saudi Arabians about the details of his plan. And it sounds... well, you'll see for yourself. Uh, the political plan, which is very detailed, is really about establishing borders and resolving final status issues. But in order to, uh, you, the goal of uh, resolving these borders is really to eliminate the borders. And so uh, if you can eliminate borders and have peace, uh, less fear of terror, you could have freer flow of goods, freer flow of people. You can wake up and the clip's over. So there you have it. Get rid of the borders and encourage free trade. Trump 2020. I couldn't find very much of the interview in English because it was all dubbed in Arabic. But the key component was, we're going to try to unite the two disconnected Palestines under one government. Because the West Bank is run by the Palestinian Authority, while the Gaza Strip is run by Hamas. Gee, I wonder which one of those two parties in the US is going to hand complete control over a unified Palestine to. Talking like this has Netanyahu a bit alarmed though, because, well, unifying the government is starting to sound quite a bit like a two-state solution. And that is not something Netanyahu wants. Pictured here in one of the happiest pictures I could find of him. If you look closely, you can see a little curl forming at the edges of his lips. The, this worry led him to recently say, I protected the land of Israel against the hostile Obama administration and I will keep doing it with the support of Trump administration. So yeah, Israel-Palestine peace might not be right around the corner. Real breaking news story there. Most people think the secret plan might be going back to the drawing board recently though because... Turkey and the Palestinian Authority have condemned the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's election pledge to expand Israeli sovereignty over the occupied West Bank if he's re-elected. Well, now he's been re-elected and people are asking, yeah, all that stuff you were talking about just before the election, we actually doing that? With the divided Palestine and Trump's support for everything Israel, people are saying that it's probably going to happen. And boy, will that just make everyone so angry until Trump tweets something stupid and we all immediately forget. Yeah, most people are saying that this is a worst case scenario for Palestinians. And all this brings us to the final thing that is about to happen in Israel, something I buried the lead to earlier. Because Israel is a parliamentary system, we don't actually know what their government will look like for a while. We're just making an estimated guess. Now, the coalition talks are just starting, but without doubt, he will be able to put together at least 61 seats out of 120 in the Knesset, the parliament. And so that's why we know that Netanyahu is the winner. He'll still be there. And that's why retired General Benny Gantz actually conceded. While our American government seems to have been designed for movies, we vote and then immediately and dramatically we see who our leader is. Most European countries and Israel have much more reality TV show inspired democracies. And Mark Burnett could not have done it much better if he was the one writing the constitution. In Israel, you vote for a party, and the seats in the Knesset are handed out based on the percentage of vote that each party gets. Problem is, barely ever does one party get more than 50% of the votes, so you move on to round two of the reality TV show. In this election, we saw Netanyahu's party get 36 seats, and his second place competitor's party get 35 seats. Oh, and the main liberal party with 6 seats. So again, this is round 2 of the reality TV show. We've distributed the power through voting, given out the first impression rows, and now you have to form alliances with some of the other parties to get it so that overall your voting coalition is over half of the parliament or in the case of Israel, 61 seats in the Knesset. So you're probably looking at the breakdown and saying, well, Netanyahu has 36 seats, but second place has 35 seats. Let's not assume that Netanyahu got the immunity idol quite yet, right? Well, 
I know you think it's close because the two leading parties are like neck and neck in the results. That would be Prime Minister Netanyahu's Likud party and Benny Gantz's new party called Blue and White. You know, but there's Netanyahu acting prime ministerial in every way, knowing that he definitely had the advantage when it comes to grouping with other parties who are thought of as right wing parties or ultra orthodox Jewish parties to form a coalition. Yeah, most of those smaller parties are very conservative as well, so Netanyahu actually has his pick of coalition partners. So that's what just happened in Israel, and that's what's happening with the Israeli election. Next stop, Middle East peace. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the left of my head. Ring that bell so the freedom will continue to ring, and give me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.